Welcome to another edition of the Final Scoop Podcast. My name is Robert Chinetsky, the Supplement Engineer. Joining me is my cavalcade of international men of mystery, TJ Gunn and Fitness Deal News, Lucas Fukowski, Prometheus Intelligence Sports Technology, Robert Samborski, Apollo Nutrition, Shane Smith, Stack.com. Gentlemen, this is uh, episode number 10 of the Final Scoop. And we've got some fun stuff in store today. We're actually going live for the first time, so we'll see... Uh, what happens with that? What kind of curveballs that we get thrown our way? Um, Sandy will be joining us, our first guest. I have no idea. That'll either be a huge win or we're going to lose every single one of our viewers. We know, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining me, as always, on our recording sessions. How is everybody doing this week? Great. Great. Good. So, uh, we're not even going to sugar. Uh, I just wanted to share this. Sh sh share this Today is fresh new swag. Oh there yeah, it's actually a good fit. It's a, it's a good fit. Yeah, it's a three X chain. You're so so swole. It's a six X. No, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's an XL. But I mean, it's 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 good. Even after hugging, lockdown, it's good. Hugging the sleeves. Hugging the yeah, sleeves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good on the sleeves. Look at that. Look at that. All right, standing. So the major news story of uh, we're gonna lead the podcast off with. Uh, French Warren signed with Apollo Nutrition. Robbie. First off, congrats, man. That is a huge, huge win for the brand. The branch is, uh, you know, uh, very well respected in the bodybuilding industry. He's been around the block a time or two. Mutual clap. Hard working motherfucker. Um, tell us how, how this came to be. Did you have a history with branch? You know, how did you two crawl to pass on? How did you guys land him? Uh, we spoke a couple of times, like at different events, different shows. I think last time we spoke was uh, maybe two or three years ago. He was still signed with Gaspari, I think, at the time. And uh, we actually, like, basically, it, it, there was a conversation about a possibility of, uh, you know, working together in the future. Uh, he liked the formulas. He liked what we were doing. Uh, we chatted for a little bit. It was one of the NPC events here in New Jersey. And that was pretty much it. Um, and then we were, we actually linked up maybe a couple of weeks ago. It was pretty fast uh, through a mutual friend, Maza Lee, who is um, kind of sort of NPC chairman um, in New Jersey. I mean, officially it's Steve Weinberger, but uh, Maz is known as uh, somebody who runs NPC in New Jersey. He promotes a couple of shows. Um, and we talked briefly and he actually mentioned, you know, that Branch is a stand up guy. And especially in this industry, you know, we all very vocal about the fact that you know, the IFBB pro community, it's not exactly what it used to be. And I think all of us in agreement that it doesn't do for the brand as much as it used to do in the past. And, um, you know, so Branch and I actually linked up and we talked a little bit on the phone and, um, you know, about the fact that uh, we would, um, I saw TJ's actually, um, you know, um, segment on uh, Wicked Cuts. And uh, it looked pretty good to me, and it's a very popular brand right now. So uh, Branch and I talked about possibility that a Palm Gym would carry Wicked Cuts at the gym, you know, as one of the retailers. And then he asked me to send him a bunch of products also for himself. So we sent him a, a package of products, and um, he called me, I think, maybe a couple of days later. And he goes, thank God I didn't double scoop Assassin. He says, typically, I double scoop my pre-workouts. And I warned him, I said, do not do it. So it goes to be, uh, I was training with Johnny Jackson and he says, and, and some other bodybuilder, and they were done after an hour, hour and a half. He goes like, I just kept going and this, this thing is insane. And then I saw his wife also posted Trish Warren, who is also an IFBB pro fitness competitor. Uh, she posted in her stories about the protein, how much she likes it. Uh, so we, we talked and, uh, you know, and then I actually got on the phone with Shane. So Shane was, uh, very good at keeping a secret. And I told him that, uh, you know, there is a possibility of collaborating with branch and Shane, uh, who is also very vocal about, you know, the state of IBB pros and, uh, you know, supplement companies, um, Shane actually surprised me with the thing that he said that he's all for it because you know branch's name and his status in the industry and um he said that yeah definitely give it a push and see you know what can be done uh we talked a couple of times uh with branch i think and what actually stood out is the fact that if he said that he want he, he will talk to me at 10 a.m 
10 a.m he would definitely give me a call like he was always on point um and you know we're still a small brand i still consider us as very small brand growing brand but definitely i would classify us as a small brand and um i told him that you know i'm not sure if we can you know if we can afford somebody like that like you know a branch of status because the guy has over uh, you know almost a million followers and he's still promoting shows and his seminars are always in huge demand and uh, you know he's very very well respected in fact somebody sent me once uh, a text message saying that uh, the best and most popular bodybuilders uh, right now is dennis wolf branch warren kai green and phil heath but if you take actually you know branch warren and kai green and dennis wolf they basically retired you know so they so they're not even competing just just says you know how much they how well they respected in in the, in the bodybuilding community um so uh you know and we, we talked some more and uh branch was not one of those money driven greedy guys that we typically come across he genuinely liked the brand he genuinely liked the product and uh we decided that you know we're gonna give it a shot and everything pretty much happened in a matter of uh, maybe two weeks uh it was pretty much a done deal there was no long negotiation there was pretty much nothing it was more of a friendship partnership collaboration more than anything and uh you know we it, it was also one of those things where everybody on the team was pretty much you know um in support of the decision and then once we announced that uh, Branch is uh, with Apollo Nutrition, the positivity and the feedback was absolutely through the roof. I, I didn't, I knew that this is going to be a big, like very, very big news, but I didn't expect it's going to get to such, you know, to such dimension as it is. And, you know, um, I was, I always value, of course, you guys, and I value your opinion tremendously. And one of the harshest critics who is always, very very honest with me and very straightforward is uh mr tj so his uh his reaction to get his positive reaction the way we we chatted yesterday was totally unexpected but very 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 welcome he was totally supportive of the decision and that was pretty much like a nail in a coffin you know to have his support definitely made me feel even more so considering my respect for him that you know that was the right decision and like I said, it's been 24 hours and nothing but positivity and nothing but, you know, only good reaction from Branch's fans, from Branch Warren, from Trish Warren, and everybody at Apollon. In fact, everybody who was walking into the gym yesterday, even though I wasn't really there, um, apparently that was like the biggest news and everybody was asking, when is Branch coming to Apollon? So, uh, you know, I couldn't be happier. Hopefully, it. I mean, we're already having people reaching out. I, I think even the sales were spiked with the news. But, uh, you know, I mean, the way it looks, it's, it only confirms that it was the right decision. And it seems like a very, very positive collaboration. One, one, so you all have athletes across different landscapes. You've got combat, combat athletes, you've got bodybuilders, you've got other physique competitors. My question is, as as a brand owner, what kind of and I I don't know if you want to go into this if you can if you if you don't mind, or if it's kind of like an NDA kind of situation where you don't disclose. But what I guess uh, standards do you hold the athletes up to as far as promoting the brand, how they discuss the brand? Well, uh, at the end of the things? day, no, I'll absolutely answer this question. Uh, and being fully transparent, I believe that the reason why all of us, I guess. Um, not huge supporters of uh, you know signing bodybuilders to a brand is because let's be honest uh, majority of athletes majority of bodybuilders either don't want to promote or don't know how to promote a brand you know just because somebody is signing a, a, your paycheck does not mean that it's enough you know i mean they look at it as a sponsorship but the fact remains even when coca-cola or pepsi or somebody you know, the sponsor a major event or something like that, obviously they won't return on the investment. That's that's the whole point. It's a business. It's not it's not a charity thing where somebody's just uh, signing a check for you and you're cashing it out and you're good to go just because you have a certain name. At the end of the day, I think you're responsible to promote 
the brand uh, to create brand awareness. And it's actually, it's your job. I mean, and you have to, you have to treat it as such. Um, if you're jumping from one brand to another every year, like certain athletes, well, most athletes, then I think your credibility is out the window. People just don't trust you. You lose that. But, you know, in, if we are talking about branch, branch been with gasp, I think for the past 14 or 15 years. And that just shows, you know, integrity. That just shows, um, you know, I actually talked to Michael, who is the owner of gasp. And we talked, I think he visited upon last year. And I remember, cause at that point, obviously I had no idea that we we're going to sign branch. But I said to him, like, why the fuck do you still have Branch Warren? And I remember his answer to me he goes, I'm never letting him go. You know, and this is a, somebody who was with Gas from, from the very beginning. You know, and uh, he, uh, as far as I know, he pretty much signed with Gas for pretty much nothing. And he grew with the brand. He's part of the brand. He's like the face of the brand, considering they have athletes who are still competing. And when it comes to Gas, it's still Branch Warren. And he's only been with like three companies, I think, three or four. I think he's been with Muscle Tech, Gaspari, um, and uh, well, Cage, uh, uh, he was with Cage, I think, for a little bit. And now with Apollon. So it wasn't like a lot of companies, like some of these athletes are jumping ship, whoever's going to pay me more. Clearly, the guy has integrity. Clearly, he has respect. But at the end of the day, when it comes to athletes, to answer your question, it doesn't matter how much you're getting paid. If you're getting paid five thousand dollars, it's only it only makes sense that just to sell product, it will take probably about ten thousand dollars just to just to pay your salary, just to justify that you're on board. But let's let's be honest, that's not a, uh, not all it takes. And the thing that I liked about Branch because he said that he would not promote the brand unless he tries it, unless he looks at it, unless he you know checks it out. And that just shows, you know, obviously he has, he owns, I think, two or three businesses. I don't think the guy is desperate for money. So that just shows integrity. And you want to be promoted by somebody like that. Um, you know, I see people are jumping from brand to brand promoting junk and saying that it's the best thing, you know, or game changer or some shit like that. And when we all know it's absolute total garbage and they're doing it for paycheck. I think the consumer is also getting more educated thanks to, you know, thanks to you, Robert, thanks to TJ, you know, obviously Shane, uh, Lucas. I mean, thanks to people in the industry that are educating the consumer on what's good and what's not good, what's shit. I mean, not, you know, to be totally honest, I mean, look what TJ did to Caged. You know, he came off fucking guns blazing. But at the end of the day, I mean... Did he did he do anything wrong? No, he didn't. He just, you know, he, he was transparent. He was honest. Did he hurt the brand? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did. But, uh, you know, he also gained a lot of trust from the consumer who actually going to, you know, watch his, uh, um, watch his reviews and they trust him with that. And those, uh, those, same, uh, they, uh, uh, those same followers will not buy junk. They will not buy a product that is called a game changer if it's not corresponds with what it represents or what it claims to be. So I think that we are shifting to more educated consumer who is, uh, you know, more than just uh, shiny, beautiful labels. They actually want quality products. So uh, I think at the same time, you want to be represented by an athlete who will correspond with your brand and will represent it from a best positive, you know, direction and, and will only emphasize the, the positivity of your brand and will spread that brand awareness. So I think that that's the key to signing an athlete. Otherwise they just useless and getting a paycheck that they don't deserve. Are there any talks, and this might be premature, but what about doing like a collaboration, like kind of a flavor flavor and do you envision maybe doing some kind of uh, collaboration with them as far as a special flavor or a special product in the coming months or years if you know, the, the partnership goes that well? Well, we talked about it. Actually, that was uh, part of the discussion and it was, uh, you know, we even have a clause in the contract. And like I said, I don't mind sharing it uh, that uh, we'll see how the partnership collaboration, how uh, how it goes in the next couple of months. And then we'll sit down and we'll discuss a possible flavor or a product that, uh, you know, represents both the palm and branch uh, 
uh, and justifies that collaboration, so to speak. So yeah, definitely in the cards. That's that's a possibility for sure. Uh, and last thing on the on the athlete thing is there, and you know, I've I've worked with a few other brands, and they brought on high profile athletes while they also already have high profile athletes in their stable. And often you get the diva syndrome where they they either don't like to play nice with others, they want to be the name star. And I mean, have you ever had to deal with any of that? And then you know. Uh, wrangle or you know control the egos on the team of all the athletes oh absolutely absolutely we had athletes who would say that you know i'm the star i'm uh, you know i'm the face of the brand and stuff like that uh we had that a lot and i i see shane smiling because i'm pretty sure that he's seen it numerous times you know somebody wins the olympia and i'll actually give you um i'll i'll <laughs> I don't mind actually revealing it. We we talked to. I'm a huge fan of uh, Dave Henry, mm -hmm. who won the Olympia at uh, two, 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 two. I think when he won, it was still two oh two. And I'm a huge fan. I'm still a huge fan of his physique. I think he is one of the best ever. And uh, it just came to. There was a possibility of us signing Dave Henry two years ago. Um, you know, we, I don't even remember who introduced us, but I remember getting on the phone with him and, uh, Robert and, uh, and TJ, they both know, uh, somebody who is very dear friend and behind the scenes when it comes to upon Alina and Alina is a type of person who won't take shit from nobody. I mean, if you think that I'm tough, I'm a pussycat in comparison. Alina doesn't care who you are. I mean, if, you know, if, if you do something wrong, you're fucked. Um, and Alina was on the phone. It was me, Alina, and Dave Henry. We were on the phone um, discussing possibility of him coming on board. And again, I I have uh, I have this thing about me that I'm very respectful to everybody. You know, I mean, unless you piss me off, I will give you nothing but respect. And uh, you know, I gave him the compliment. I told him that you know I think he is one of the best ever, which I still think that he is. And um, it would be great, you know, to see if we can collaborate, if we can, you know, work something out. And I remember that um, he was very cold. He was co very cold during the conversation. Um, he wasn't somebody who was fired up to, you know, to join the team. Uh, he was mostly like, you know, very casual about it. And then finally he hit me, I won't disclose the number, but he hit me with pretty outrageous number in terms of, uh, you know, how much he wants to get paid. And again, you know, right now the brand is at the certain level, but remember two, three years ago, you know, we were just getting started. We, <laughs> we were at the very bottom. Um, and I remember saying to him, I didn't say no, but I said, okay, Dave, like say, for example, you know, we pay you that amount. What will you do for the brand? You know, how will you justify that paycheck? And, uh, you know, and I think it's a fair question. Um, you know, how are we going to get return on the investment? And his answer to me was, I don't care. He says, that's not my problem. And, and I, remember, I remember saying, like, what do you mean it's not your problem? I mean, it is a problem for us to sign a check on a monthly basis. Right. You know, where is that money going to come from? So I remember his answer. He was like, you know what? It's not my problem and it's your problem. But what you should be happy about is the fact that you're going to have Mr. Olympia on your roster. Mm -hmm. As soon as he said that, Alina hung up the phone and she goes to me, it's over. And I remember, like I said, well, you know, it's pretty, in my opinion, it was pretty disrespectful, cold and arrogant, but the conversation was over. You know, I, I just don't think that that's, I mean, you're basically looking to be employed. You're, you're, you know, it's an interview. Uh, you know, you have to, every time you, you're looking for a job, you're going to go and you're going to present yourself from the best possible angle and to pitch the idea to the potential boss why he should hire you. But you're not going to say like, listen, it's a privilege for you just to have me on, uh, you know, uh, on your roster and that's it. Where the money is going to come from or how you're going to make the money, it's not my problem. And uh, unfortunately, that's not the only person. That's not, not the only time that I've experienced something like that. You know, we, we had conversation with numerous athletes and, you know, always willing to give a chance. But I think that that's the main reason why today, I think two or three out of top six at the Mr. Olympia are not sponsored. 
10, 20 years ago, it was unheard of for a Mr. Olympian not to be sponsored or, you know, for somebody in the top six not to be sponsored. Pretty much everybody was sponsored. It was like a given thing. But today, it's a very, very competitive market. And uh, there are other means of advertising your product. You know, you don't even need to go to the Olympia or to the, Ar to the Arnold Classic. You can, uh, you can collaborate with somebody like Shane. And, you know, because of social media, because of the internet, you can promote your product to thousands and thousands of people without shipping, you know, a shitload of product and, you know, sending a team out and paying outrageous amount of money to the Olympia or the Arnold Classic promoters. And yet everybody's going to find out about you. You know, so I think times have changed. And at the same time, there are people like Branch Warren. There are people like, uh, you know, for example, Sadiq Hatsovic, who is with GAT. And they do have a reach and people do follow them and people do respect them. And uh, I see why the companies would, you know, pay to have those people on their roster. Why? Because they do have integrity. They do promote. I mean, I think Sadiq is... Uh, one of the key athletes that put GAT on the map. Um, so I, I, I just think that the percentage of athletes today that are worth the investment is definitely in probably single digits. I guess that can segue into another topic that we, we've assembled a list of, you know, various topics that we can discuss over the weeks. And one of the ones that TJ had put forth a, a couple of weeks back was influencer marketing. Is it worth it? Um, and so, you know, I think, TJ, let's let, let's let you lead off with that since you're kind of like the marketing tech guy. You know, do you think it's worth it is, or is it more of like an individual case-by-case -case basis? Well, I think it's individual. We had a conversation around this. And uh, I think when you choose someone to carry the brand or to help you with marketing, there's a couple of things. One, how much uh, – how much – following or clout does he actually have? So that's number one. But then I think what I mentioned also when we talked about it then is the ability to actually tell a story and someone that stands for something. So I think if you just have like a buff dude, <laughs> big dude, and he has like zero personality and he stands for shit, then it just doesn't matter. I mean, why would people buy the stuff that he talks about? Because he's big? I mean, I just... I think that's like so 60s. And uh, when we when we used to see ads in uh, muscle and strength or muscle and fitness and someone was big and we said, oh, shit, he's big because he was drinking Optimum Nutrition Gold Standard, not because of that. So that, these days are gone, right? I mean, people relate to stories. And I think that 99% of the people on the stage at the Olympia or wherever, they have very you know, uh, I would say subtle personality to no personality and they're, they don't stand for shit except being big. So I think there's not a lot of people that actually have, you know, you look at them and you say, you know what, I can visualize what is this guy like in a private conversation. I can visualize what would this guy look like with his family. And when, what I was telling Robert yesterday is I think Branch Warren is actually one of them, where I can, I've never met him, I actually met him in a couple of Olympias, like shook his hand, but like I can visualize what he stands for, right? He's not, like I'm sure he's not like this uh, funny dude that will tell you stories about, <laughs> like he looks like hardcore Texas, no bullshit, heavy <laughs> stuff, eat meat all day and whatever make America great again. That's what it feels like. So I, I think, he, like, I look at him and he stands for something. He's very short, short you know, like, and he's not just very short, but very, like, uh, doesn't uh, talk a lot, a lot. Like, he stands for something. Mm -hmm. Most people, I think, uh, Juan, that, I mean, it seems like an, a very nice guy, but I don't think he stands for shit except being big. And, like, 99% of, of the bodybuilders. So I think with influencers, as long as they can tell a story, and they stand for something, I think that there's definitely uh, opportunities in helping them tell your brand. So we make a lot of fun here about Ghost, uh, but I think that Max Tuning and Christian, it's a brilliant selection mm -hmm. for a lifestyle brand to choose to work with lifestyle influencers. It's brilliant, I, I think it's brilliant. They tell a story all day. 
and you're becoming part of their story. So generally speaking, I think influencer marketing is awesome. And there's so many things that you can do with influencer marketing. You just need to choose the ones that can actually tell your story. They can tell it as part of their story. And for that, you need someone with a story. So I think Branch is a great choice. There's not a lot. Like I'm trying now to think about in my head, Kai Green. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a story, right? Like if someone can take Kai Green and have him, I don't know how you fit into his story because he's so convoluted. Yeah. But generally speaking, you know, it stands for something. It's like there's a story behind this. It's not just big. Can, anybody, the, uh, can anybody relate to these influencers? Though? Like you mentioned Christian Guzman, like a lot of female influencers. I mean, these people are making like six, seven figures a year. Oh, no, but it's, what, way, more, it's way more than six figures a year. But there's, uh, I think, yes. Man. You think the average person, the average supplement consumer, oh, actually uh, thinks they can connect with these people or they're, they're similar? No, 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 because look at them, right? Like you, the, these guys, listen, again, like I'm into storytelling. Yeah. They're brilliant at telling their story. Like you look at the Christian Guzman video, which I haven't done in like ages, but sometimes I just go to check it out just to see what's going on as far as storytelling. He's like this sweet soul guy that everybody would want as a friend. That's how he uh, like portrays himself and that's how he comes across. So the fact that he's a, or this Max Tuning guy, which I don't know if you've ever seen a video of him. I've been, I used to follow a bit more like three, four years ago when he just started or five years ago. Man, he seems like so much as the neighbor next door. And he's even when he showed, like, I think his last 50 videos, I haven't seen it either, either. I just see them pop up. He's like showing his new house, whatever, and stuff like that. People love it because they're actually happy for him. He's one of these guys that people look at it and says, yeah, he shows off his uh, whatever he shows off, his pool. But I'm happy for him. Good for Max. Good for Max. And hey, Sandy, what's up? So uh, look at that Apollo Nutrition uh, T-shirt. And <laughs> so uh, I think people are happy for them. So it did well for Ghost. Anyway, I, I think that these are the type of people. Like I wouldn't put a dickhead to represent my brand unless, unless I'm selling condoms, right? Then that would be great. But uh, other than that, these, these people, people love them. Yeah, so it works. I think it works. We talked about like set for Rossi, right? I think people, it's very similar to Branch, sort of, hey, no bullshit, uh, hardcore. That's you just need a story. story. Most of them don't tell a story, though. Shane, do you think influencers move the needle? And why haven't you signed any influencers for Stack yet? Oh, what the fuck? Shane? That's a good point. It's, I mean, <clears throat> I, I just uh, just do what I can with the podcast and uh, see how it goes. Um, I don't know. I think uh, it's... It, Depending on the brand, obviously, I think it's uh, as TJ said. Depends, like, like it's fitting for lifestyle brands. If you get lifestyle uh, influences and stuff like that, you get a hardcore brand. You get a hardcore. I think it just uh, reinforces and um, uh, what's the word I'm looking? It just yeah, it just reinstills the values of the brand. Like if you're a hardcore brand and you get branch, yeah, it's gonna seem like oh shit, this is really hardcore. You get like ghost and you get christian and max and other guys are, are living the lifestyle and the uh i guess the theme that ghost represents then you're like shit that's a good fit that just uh yeah like i said it reinforces the yeah if you if it's a high, again if it's a hardcore brand and you're just sort of like unsure if it's a new brand and then kind of like what Apollon is and then branch comes on it's uh just gives it that extra value it's just a you know gives a reason for people to trust that it is hardcore and you know i think it's uh depends on the brand i mean it as i think robert said in previous episodes i think you can do well without them i think you can do well with them just you know entirely up to you i guess because they obviously can go bad i've seen it go bad and not do anything so yeah that's gonna be go both ways is the uh are they even i mean can you be successful without them so to where if you're a that didn't have some big name uh, bodybuilder, uh, fitness influencer, physique model, or you know, combat athlete. Could you be successful without that as a brand? Yeah, there's heaps of them that don't have them. Like, I mean, Muscle Tech hasn't had a, a lead lead athlete for a while. Um, they have, they have still have a good stable, but they don't have that key 
like uh, you know branch for pollen um Sephirosi for axis sledge um bs is another one optimum they used to have steve cook um they don't really have that key face anymore right i um, mean sally core they don't really have a, a key face that's in everything so all the top guys as far as i know yeah. none of them have i mean recon ones is is aaron so. <laughs> Yeah, he's become a big you know, yeah, like, They have like a million. This is actually a great example. Like in on Redcon One, they have like a million uh like micro and macro influencers. And but there's no one that you would remember actually represent the brand. When they started with Dallas, uh yeah, the, that was a thing because he was part of the brand, he represented the brand. He did he, he was story he, and he was a good yeah. story. Uh, after that, they have like a billion of them. A billion, a billion, in, including Cedric McMillan and others, but nobody even like you can't. First, you can't keep track. One second, there's no real story there. They're, they don't stand for shit, so you, you don't relate them to the brand. Listen, influencer marketing works. We don't need to. We can. I mean, I, I know that we're all geniuses here on this uh, freaking podcast, but influencer marketing works, right? We don't need to decide whether it works or not. Huge amount of brands were built and are being built on 100% pure influencer marketing, whether it's influencer marketing led brands, like whatever, the Kardashian sister, whatever her name was, that uh, just sold their company for a billion dollars or so, uh, the cosmetic brand. What's her name? Kylie Jenner, Jenner or whatever. I don't remember names. <laughs> shit. But anyway, she built a full brand on, uh, on her influence, right? So this stuff works. You just need to be able, again, like if you're a bodybuilder, don't start a cosmetic line. If you're uh, if you if you stand for a hardcore stand, bring someone that can tell a story, represents a story, and people relate to. Let me tell you a story about influencer marketing. At, at, when we started the company, we I did some uh, YouTube influencer uh, videos, right? Like I actually did did some sponsored stuff on YouTube to tell the story. I just wanted to, the FDN story to go out, and we actually worked with, by the way, including Max Tuning. Max Tuning has a video with FDN talking about fitness gyms. And it was early in the day, so today probably I wouldn't be able to do it. But um, anyway, here's the thing. I'll tell you what worked and what didn't work. The only ones that worked were the ones that people related to their lifestyle. So when they told the story, it sounded like they were just telling something that they appreciate as a service. Mm -hmm. The ones that didn't work was all the buff dudes that do training videos and suddenly out of nowhere to talk about this site that can save you money. And you look at it. Dude, just do a couple of push-ups, please. Like, what the fuck are you giving me advice on sites? So <laughs> the only things that worked were people that had a story. They were telling a story. And then they were, when they were telling the story, our story became part of their story. Same thing for ghosts or so for something else. So I think when you have a following and people look at it when they go into your, uh, when they follow you, when they hear what you're talking about, they really believe that you're sharing your life, mm -hmm. right? then that's fine. Now, if you are selling lifting belts, then great. Have someone that does only training video to show your lifting belt. That's great. Mm -hmm. That would work. But like if you're selling a brand, it's, a it's really hard. Influencer marketing works, though. I think we're not going to solve it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now uh, we'll, we'll do the introduction. We're joined now for those watching on video by the vivacious, the loquacious. Um, <laughs> Sandra, Denise Shinetsky, my wife. There you go. Very subdued, low key. I have to give her, you know, 600 milligrams of caffeine <laughs> to be energetic. In the I morning. don't have any caffeine. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. We, we were saying a couple of times that we were wondering, Sandy, how it would look like if you were actually on caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I feel like I'm yeah. tempted to give you a full scoop of hooligan right now. Right. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks for having me on. I feel like I don't contribute much, but it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how the rest of us feel. guys, a couple of times. Ah, that's not a good idea. Hold oh, no, we were talking ah, about. Fine. We were talking about influencers and somebody that's not in the industry. Somebody that. What are your motivations when it comes to purchasing something? Okay, well, I don't count as the average person because I don't have Insta, Facebook whatever like i don't do instagram at all really do that so i can't relate to the average person that does those things so where do you where do you uh pick up stuff that's how do you know what the fuck is happening in the world i don't 
And that's okay. why I'm a happy person. Okay, excellent. That's a, a good, good approach. Conscious decision right. to, just, to disconnect. The world I don't want to be a part of. The world okay. I live in is a day to day. It's it's more than enough. For thousands of years, I'm sorry, I'm like a history buff. For thousands of years, the world one lived in was enough to get the job done. Right. They don't right. feel the need to like. Interesting. I'm a problem solver. So like, if I know there's an issue. I want to fix it. We'll Google it. I fix it. I just get frustrated. Like, why aren't people doing this? And then I just like, you know what? It's fine. So uh, how do you know, for example, Sandy, who's the president, for example, or stuff like that? Like, because other people talk about it. That's okay. how I just, I, I know what I need to know. Okay. Interesting. What do you mean on this side and stuff like that? Like you want. Huh? You don't go into news sites or like. I like news sites again, because I feel like they're so. It's not even news anymore, but even in the past, I didn't like it in the 90s because it was always on wars and it was always on the bad things that were happening. And I don't think that, that just because something bad happens doesn't mean it's the only thing happening in the world. There's also good things happening. Like, I don't know how to, I, it, it's not that I want to be uninformed, but it's that I want to maintain a semblance of a happy, positive life. There's this comic strip of uh, that my friend used to have in college that's taped to the wall. And it was, Little, it was like two cats talking. I don't know. And like one cat was like, this is a terrible world. All the horrible things and all the wars and all the crimes and all the rape and all the horrible things. And then the other one's like, the beautiful trees and the beautiful sky. And it's like, no, I'm talking about a different world. And it's like, I feel like the world is what you choose to see it. It is right. what it is. Yeah. You can focus on whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, I mean. Yeah, no, it's a... It's, uh... It's a good approach. I can totally see it. There's very little positive in uh, opening the news or stuff like that. Like they're purposefully. I mean, if you're, if you're the news, they're trying to show you the bad. By definition, everyone. It's like everything is a clickbait. You know, yeah. I always say that. Like uh, if uh, uh, you know, like uh, I see that now with the Corona thing. If they if they want to interview someone, they'll interview the one that died or the one that they know. Of Right, the, the, the hundred that were okay. It's yeah. a boring freaking story. Yeah. <laughs> let's find the one that died. Let's let's one. And I agree with you. It's true for everything. It's uh, I always say like you know a kid slaps a kid in school. The the headline is sc school violence at yeah. all time high. Right, like uh, it's it's always like that. Right? Yeah, uh, and okay. I just not to feed it. So, but is there brands that you like? I mean, now if you're not on Insta, Facebook, or anything, so how do you even buy shit? You just what? Robert, Robert feeds me and, and shoves like he gives. Even for, like no apparel, like apparel brands. Even forget supplements. Like how? Do, what's in? What influences you? This is a great. I, I think you're about to see how boring I really am, TJ. Are you sure you want to go there? Because it's I, not. I, I can take a lot of shit. Go for okay. it. Okay, <laughs> my older sister was going to give clothes away to Goodwill when she got pregnant and thought she would be fat forever. And then she gave them to me instead. I liked the shirts, found out they were from a place called The Limited. Then I then went to The Limited and bought more shirts that looked identical to the shirt that I liked, all in different yeah. colors. I could whip them out right now. Yeah, That's how I shop. Awesome. I get pants when I need them. I am a need, not a want shopper. Okay. I have pants that I've been wearing for 15 years. I've got a dress that I yeah. have high school dances yeah, the Damn. Yeah. <laughs> it's a neat thing right, right okay wow you're like a nightmare for every marketeer like, i know yeah, right exactly. like, yeah. sorry both of us pretty much are i'm a super wow. need yeah, not yeah. once i can see some marketing agency going like watching this and saying okay that's a lost cause that's it yeah, she's a no like Move get her out team. make her stop talking <laughs> But I think, and you know what makes me so sad though, TJ, is that I am genuinely happy and fulfilled. And I, I teach at a high school. Yeah, I know. And it's 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 a it's a, it's a wealthy school. It's about twenty five thousand a year for a child to go there. So the families that go there have to have a lot of money, and a lot of them have like five kids going to my school at this oh, wow. time because it's K through twelve. I mean, it's a lot of money to shell out for education for your children. So I feel bad because the anxieties of the parents are going to the anxieties of the children and everybody's anxious and everybody's worried. And I am, who cares? Who cares? You guys need to care a lot less what other people think. Like, it's fine. And I feel bad because I don't know how to give them my don't give a shit, like attitude right. to be happy. 
Yeah. Uh, but I was like this even when I was younger. I remember yeah, it's genetics. It can't be, you know, are your sister yeah. like that? Your sister that gave you the limited clothes. Is she like you? No. There you go. It's listen, you're yeah. born. I have I have three boys. Yeah. All of them are super different, right? Like yeah. one is happy, one is like so intense, is like you, you feel the pressure in his like blood. The other one curly hair that you can see on the reviews, Gilad, which you I think you saw that, Sandy, that they want uh, you yes, and to be on the same video. Yeah, Gilad. We're going to be a B team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he's happy all the time and everything is like, okay, next time, no worries. Hey, can I have this? No. Okay, yeah, forget yeah. it next time. Well, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, so it's genetics. You were born that way. That's great. Or I read a Time magazine that actually said that the siblings form you more than the parents do. Like the way the siblings interact with each other kind of forms somebody's personality. Like I'm the youngest of three and my two older sisters were quite wild. Right. So I've always been the good kid in relationship because right. I was like, I don't want to get in trouble like they are. Yeah. So they kind of made me the way that I am. And I feel like maybe your sons infect each other. And I think it's more complex than that, to be honest. I think like oh, yeah. there's something that they were born with or all of us were born with. And maybe. then us as parents, by the way, most of the time, our our opportunities are mostly to, to screw them over rather than to improve. I like, hear you. That's that's us, and then siblings have some effects. Environment or some. Obviously, I'm not talking about extreme environments. Like if you grow up in something, that's oh different. God, forget it. Normal environments. Uh, personal belief is 80% what you're born with, and then 20% what your parents or siblings screw up or not screw up. Like yeah. uh, and by example, and I think that's, that's why you're different from your sisters. There's something you're born with. It's like. Well, I'm grateful. I was born with what I got because it's super low maintenance. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to relate to the app. I was easy. It was easier for me to relate to people 20 years ago. As times are going, either I'm getting more stuck in my ways, or people are just shifting exponentially in a different direction than I choose to go. So it's like I'm hanging out with like I'd rather talk to someone in their 60s or their 70s. So that <laughs> I can relate. It's getting hard. It's getting hard, TJ. Okay, though. There you go. <laughs> what are you drinking? I am drinking a drink Robert made me. It's alcohol. Alcohol. There you go. God damn it. We should make this an alcohol uh, time. We should. It's like 6 a.m. for <laughs> Shane. I think it's perfect for Shane. I don't drink, man. We've already been through this. Yeah. <laughs> Shane doesn't okay. like coffee. He doesn't like alcohol. He likes monsters, bangs, and rains. And that's Do you it. have children? I do. You do? Okay. Well, I have eight child. I had a guy at school who said he never drank coffee until he had his first child. And then he said, okay, now I'm going to start drinking coffee. And then he had his second child and he said, you know, I think now's a good time to start drinking alcohol. And they said they can't have any more because they don't know what, they don't know where he'll go after that. Yeah, I, I just, I didn't drink coffee because I think, I think coffee, I think coffee tastes like shit and alcohol. I cannot stand being in the same room as the someone who smells like alcohol. It makes me want to throw up. Oh, Shane, you have like this uh, smell phobia. I just figured what? this thing out, like the coffee thing and now the alcohol thing. What the hell? One of the coffee things I can... What smells don't you like? Coffee, you? We know. Co coffee, I'm good with the... Uh, with the... The, um, the coffee smells good. The the smell, I'm fine. I just don't like the taste. Yeah. But the alcohol thing, someone suggested it may be related to uh, my upbringing and how... My relatives might have been intense alcoholic. <laughs> relatives forming him. You guys are proving my point. So, uh, but then, the, then other people in my family have absolutely no problem. So, wait, I have a question. Do you like dark chocolate? I mean, I don't. I'll, I'll eat it. Are you? So you're more of a fan of like milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Do you have a? Uh, pro I probably put them in the same basket. Okay, well, because I can make coffee taste just like dark chocolate. So I feel like maybe... Yeah, but see, here's, here's my issue. This is the same argument someone said to me. said, you should have this drink because this one tastes like a chocolate milkshake. I'm like, bro, why the fuck didn't I have a chocolate milkshake there? <laughs> and you're like, I can make this taste like chocolate. Why don't I, I just have you. chocolate there? I hear you. It's like the people that are vegan and they're sitting there trying to make a vegan burger. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's your carrot. You don't yeah. get to taste something that tastes come like... On, a come on, come on. No, no. No bueno. <laughs> if you want I mean, that burger... 
I actually had the vegan burgers. We turned uh, my son Gilad actually curly hair. He turned vegan. He just decided uh, about two months ago. Yeah, and I I went vegetarian in his honor. So uh, I just eat vegetables. So no, we. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to it when you're. Uh, I eat fish now, like pescatarian anyway. But uh, yeah, but meat, meat is not a big thing for me. But I've been having these uh, vegan burgers anyway. That's what I was. Oh uh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Robert, Robert, could you go vegan? No. <laughs> vegan is harder than vegetarian. Vegetarian is easy, guys. Vegetarian is nothing. Yeah, you can you can still do milk, eggs, and yogurt, yeah. yogurt, eggs, whatever. Vegan is where vegan vegan is where really you you turn down the volume on on availability of stuff to eat. It's yeah, uh, I could I could I could not. I could not, not eat meat. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll take this moment to, uh, for all the people that are tuning into the live session, if you have comments, questions, uh, smart ass remarks for our panel, feel free to post them up and we'll get to all of them in due time while I. Uh, oh, that's what's coming at the bottom. I saw something pop up and I thought it was like an yeah. ad. Chris, yeah. Chris We're has been influencers. A long time. A long time. <laughs> going back many, many years. So, uh, yeah. It's called. I was trying to figure out what it was. Okay. Do like dark chocolate, but I mean, I make it taste like dark chocolate because I don't put no cream in it. Yeah, but again, why don't I just have some chocolate? I mean, just I this way, it. I would rather have I'd rather have dark chocolate and then a monster than you make a coffee taste like dark chocolate. <laughs> there you go. I feel like we should go eat together. It should be like a fun adventure. At this a is what everyone says to me. Work. Let's go drink. Uh, trust me, you'll you'll like. I don't know how many times people told me you'll like. You need to find drink. I'll find one for you. And I'm like, shut just I've heard this for like 15 years. I'm like, give up, man. Just get your crystal line. I used to not drink for a really long time. Cause uh, I had a feeling I had pretty much fun without it. And I was right. But I do engage. I just never yeah, had yeah. I, I remember I I'll, I'll just you know, uh when I grew up, I remember using I'm talking like 18 to uh, 20. So I grew up in a very non-alcoholic environment. Ooh. And then generally speaking, I, I remember like watching uh, people in the movies and uh, or shows and they were coming home and pouring that drink, right? Like, and I was looking at, what, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't get it. And then I, I, as uh, life hits you and, <laughs> and, and, and then you say, and then you want to take the edge off at the end of the day. That's the thing. That's when I actually started uh having like I, I now i don't drink but i used to have like that drink end of the day like just uh usually vodka by the way vodka oh. and, uh, like uh, uh what do you call it screw screwdriver right like screwdriver or orange juice. yeah orange juice actually then i moved to grapefruit then i moved to apple juice if you ever tried the vodka with apple juice that's really good is it, uh, is it yeah the one. <laughs> we want to do it with apple juice we didn't buy any this week. We gotta do it next week. <laughs> it's so good. Anyway, but then I and now that I stopped, actually at some point I stopped drinking, and I totally miss taking the edge off at the end of the <laughs> Why day. Why don't you? Oh my god! I don't know. Like I have. <laughs> I need to, I need to, uh, yeah. this is like a psychologist moment though. We need like therapy now because I'm, I'm, I have so much shit going on and I'm just like, I don't want to take the edge off, but I really want to take the edge off, but I don't want to take the edge off, but I miss it. I miss it. I totally miss it. Taking the edge off is important. And, I never uh, want to take the edge off. No. So Shane, you're still a baby. Give, give it 10 years. When did you take the edge off? How old were you? 13. No, <laughs> I just after like my bar mitzvah, you know, like it was really this pressure. They were literally like, what everyone has told me. Everyone has told me since I was like 18. They were like, dude, just wait till you get older. Just wait till you get older. No. I'm like, bro, I'm well past old now. Okay. Right, right. No, no, I was I was actually that period of time was 35 to no, 33 to 40, sort of. Oh, look at that. I was taking the end of. Um, like at the end of the at, at, like you know what I mean like it's eight p.m. Just no, like, I don't know what you mean. Fade out. No, I, now I don't know what I mean. Also, but I would. It was yeah. a period of time where it was helpful. TJ, so you you were drinking to take the edge off. It wasn't like you were drinking. It was just to take the no, edge no, off. No, like when when you drink. No, I'm not talking like uh, American college level of let me no, find. No, no, I, I, I. I mean, you're specific, like you would have a drink to take the edge off, right? I mean, that's what 100% it was. 100% to take the edge off. That's it. Okay, so, but you said, like, uh, I think you said that you stopped. 
Yeah. Was there was there a substitute for a drink to to take it? No, I, think I told you guys like weed doesn't work on me. I I have like uh, like I don't know what it is. I'm fucked up genetically. It doesn't work on me. So the only option is that or heroin, and I don't think I'm gonna go with heroin. I, I gave up that option. No, it's just uh, so nothing, nothing. But what? Why was the decision to stop? No, so Try. then I actually stopped almost everything. So uh, there was a period of time. It was just a period of time when I went uh, totally monk level on almost everything, just as an experiment. And then I never came. I still I drink like but once. I had a beer here. I think at podcast number one, that was like. But that's like what whatever one or two beers and in the last six months I think so. Yeah, but this this conversation definitely makes me want to go and have a drink. Maybe I'll open uh, Lucas's uh, <laughs> vodka finally. Go for it. <laughs> no, it's a very vital purpose for me for writing. It helps. He needs it. He has to stick up his ass. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you think he like to take the edge off. That's why needs, I, I needed to like depress my, my cognitive function just so I can get into like a groove where I can just write. Yeah, I can totally see that though. Honestly, I'll tell you, uh, you know, a lot of what I do, Robert, is, is in line with what you do in the sense of creativity just mm -hmm. on the day to day. Yeah. And there's there is a point where it's really hard to shut. It's sort of you need to shut down elements of your brain yeah. in order to go to the places you need to go. Right. And it's true. And I totally see how a, a dose of uh, of taking the edge off can help. Like I can totally see that. Yeah. It's really maybe hard. I'm just maybe I'm not old enough yet. No, Shane. Let me tell you something. Coming from a woman, because y'all will never hear this, but I just want to say, Shane, I support you because I've had so many women tell me when I was younger, "You'll get fat after you have a baby." So enjoy being thin now, Miss. And I'm like, excuse you? So I was like, all right, I'm gonna get fat. That's why my sister, size two, gave me all her size two nice oh, clothes. Limited. Thinking she'd get fat. And then she went right back to size two and I wasn't giving her back her clothes and she wanted to go shopping. So she went, she went right back to size two. <laughs> it is not when you will get older, you will start drinking. You are fine just the way you are. Oh, we love like, you, Shane. Trust me, I, I, like I said, I've, 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 I've been through this all through high school, university. It's but every, everybody answers one of two ways. They say, "Have you tried this?" Or I think I could make it taste like this. Or they just say, "Sweet." Sweet. Yeah, that's the that was the way our friends were. Around. We didn't we drink in college. Well, yeah. it took a sec. It took a yeah, little bit. It took a couple years. But we were LSU. It's, we do what we do. It's a party school. Oh boy, we do what you do. So yeah. But we didn't drink our freshman year. Yeah, we that was the reaction. Yeah. People would offer us and say, yeah, we're good. I was I mean, that was when I was at like TJ said, the monk level of everything. That was him. It was like freshman year. Don't look any don't look sideways at anybody. Just stay, <laughs> stay in your lane. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man. I was but it, it was never there was never pressure to do drugs or alcohol or anything no. like that. And, yeah. True. Yeah, Shane, don't do drugs, Shane. I've never done weed before. And I'm okay with it. In fact, I think the fact that I say done weed or do weed says it all because my sister was who used to do it a lot you say then you don't she say no one says do weed i was like well i don't know i don't do drugs i don't do weed i don't do weed. i didn't even know i would say it the same way i would say i, I, I don't yeah. do weed she said you're supposed to say smoke weed but i don't do that either interesting okay I i'd say yeah i don't interact verbiage right <laughs> Shane, does your wife drink at all or no oh i mean not like intensely, but she used to back in the party days. Yeah, the occasional thing or something, a glass of wine. Yeah, when you go out. That's when like I went out and they were like, when you come out, you got a drink. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. And they're like, everyone else is. And I was like, so? <laughs> and it used to be like a real thing. And I'd go to these places and I'm like, everyone, when you see, when you're the person not drinking and everyone is, everyone around you at these clubs and stuff, you just look at them all and I'm like, everyone looks like so dazed and dumb. Yes, but they, like, they, like I feel like I feel like if you were like that though, everyone would look fucking awesome. But I'm like just sitting there, not doing anything, just like I do, I do not feel comfortable. But hey, I did it. You know, you learn these things with doing them. We're but not awesome, like, because you had to have a deep, before you like what, Uber, Uber, you had to be a designated driver. So like we would be the designated driver, and I with you, we would watch the bodies. Nah, I wasn't the designated driver. I was just. 
Like the opposite we evolution. They go back to like Homo erectus. Like, no. <laughs> it was. It was like it just like dulled the the brain a bit. Yeah. Which is kind of like my relatives when they used to when they did a lot, and I'm like, I used to think it was funny, but anyway, I just yeah never appealed to me. Hey, uh, Robert, there's a question on the chat. Actually, how's the reopen going? You, you just reopened, right, in Germany? Yeah, the, the gym. Yeah. Um, How do we feel, by the way, with all the masks and everything? Yeah, How do you it's so 20%. Is it by weight or by amount of people? Like, if you have, like, a really fat-ass guy, does that count, like, 25%? What, what's going on? I, I think that, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, they have the restrictions with 25% uh, capacity. But I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, the gym is packed all the time. Definitely not. I think still a lot of people are scared. Then you have, of course, really? a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, some wives won't allow their husbands to go to the gym and vice versa. Uh, that's, uh, th that's something that nobody took into account. The funny thing is, is that uh, in terms of like a revenue, like financially, we definitely saw a spike like never before we actually broke all records uh you know the opening day because people are signing up like new people really new signups new signups a lot of new signups how do you explain that though how do you explain that though i'm not sure i understand the mindset uh because a lot of gyms went out of business oh so you got new revenue a from lot a lot of gym gyms went out of business so you have a lot of people who are you know signing up for the gym uh, for the gym membership um, also, a lot of people are staying away. Actually, somebody I just uh, answered on a poll on Jim uh, Instagram because somebody criticized us. I think they criticized everybody in general. Somebody commented and said that, uh, why the fuck would you put a mask on? You know, it's so bad for your health and stuff like that. Who came up with that and, shit? And, 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 and it's funny because Robert and I discussed this uh, yesterday, right, Robert, about the masks? And... You know, it's not something that I agree with because, you know, when I put a mask on and I work out, I don't feel 100%. I feel very claustrophobic and it's not easy to breathe. But at the end of the day, you know, we're just happy that they finally fucking allowed us to go back yeah, to yeah. the gym. And, you know, we take it. It is what it is. You know, it doesn't mean that I agree with it. it doesn't mean that I, I condone it. But what the fuck can you do? I mean, it is what it is. 25%. Masks have to be on, you have to sign in, the waivers have to be... I mean, just to get into a fucking gym, there is like a whole procedure. They have to take your temperature and stuff like that. It's it, it's a it's a mess, but what, there is absolutely nothing you can do, you know? I mean, people are just... Those that are back in the gym, they're just happy that they finally can go and work out. I hear you. Who came up with that? Uh, I, I, my, by the way, my wife also came, uh, read somewhere some probably some news uh, item that decided to scare people that it's worse to work out with a mask than not work out alone. I'm assuming if you're like trying to swim, that would be a problem. But who came up with that shit for lifting? I just don't understand that. Thing. Well, I, I know for a fact that actually the opening day, one of the gyms in New Jersey, somebody actually passed out wearing a mask. What, did, what was he doing though? He probably hasn't worked out in a while. It has nothing probably. Happened. Or he just was trying to hold his breath for like four minutes. Like, what, what was he doing? Like, he was thinking, like, if he has a mask, he's not supposed to breathe. How do you... Like, I just don't get it. I hate the mask. By the way, I avoid... Someone told me yesterday, I took my kids to this... Um, what do you call it? Anyway, like uh, the car racing shit for That's kids. Not... Yeah, go-kart go type thing, right? And they said, hey, join us. I said, no way, I'm standing in line because I need to put a mask. Fuck it, I'm staying in the car waiting for you guys. Just do whatever you want to do. Right. Like, I would never put a mask unless I have to. But I have a gym at home. Yeah, so me too. I just won't put a mask. I hate it. I don't like it, whatever. But seriously, you don't faint from wearing a mask. <clears throat> what the hell do you do? Like, unless it was like he bought one of these 100%, not 95%. He said, screw that. I'm going all the way. 100% isolation. <laughs> no breathing, no air coming in. I'd rather you work out in a hazmat suit. Right. I, 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 I think that people are like, you know, it, it, the one of the excuses that I heard was, uh, well, if, I, if you make me, that's my favorite, actually. If you make me wear a mask in the gym, then I'm not coming. Well, number one, it's not my decision whether you wear or not. You know, it's the governor's order. There's nothing uh, I can do. You know, if you don't want to come, don't come. Right. You know, so, some people say like, well, I have a medical condition. You know, if somebody is wearing a mask in the gym and you're not, 
then guess what? That person's going to come up to me and going to say like, well, he's not wearing a mask. Why the fuck should I wear a mask? You might get closed down. And then, and then you have the, you know, the, the typical, well, that's violation of my constitutional rights. Well, go and talk. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You get that all the time. I mean, that's normal. Get it. Like what? Someone comes into the gym and says, God damn it, man. I have the constitution with me. <laughs> yeah, so people come up with different Let's read this shit. together, man. Let's read this together. Oh, you're new Well, and another thing is, is yesterday, actually, we had somebody who walked into the gym and uh, he was supposed to, you know, pay membership. You know, obviously the gyms, just like every other business, they hurt pretty bad because for six months we were under lockdown and stuff like that. And when you have 25% capacity, obviously, you know, you know, you want to pay your rent, your bills, uh, salaries, etc. So somebody walked in and, uh, you know, had to pay his membership. So when he was uh, he was told that he has to pay his membership, he goes, "Well, I'm an IFBB pro. I'm not going to pay." I'm <laughs> what? And and he left the gym because he was charged as an IFBB pro, which is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Ego, arrogance, ego. hubris. What is that? I'm an IFBB pro. I don't pay. Is that like a rule? No. Well, you know what? A few years ago, is that the Constitution, by the way. I'm a professional hot dog eater. I get to eat free everywhere I go. It doesn't make any sense. You know what? I need to, about, I need to become an IFBB pro. About ten, <laughs> uh, yeah, about ten or twenty years ago, a lot of hardcore gems would not charge pros to get in. But don't forget, really? but, yeah. But back then, to get a pro card was mm. almost impossible. You know, you would have like a few people in the state that would turn pros. It was very, very competitive, and you only had bodybuilding, and that's pretty much it. Today you have a million categories and to get a pro card is actually not that challenging. So every gym has pros and, uh, you know, some of them actually don't want to pay because they think that they professional athletes, so to speak. So, you know, they feel entitled. They pay uh, with their body. Yeah, literally. If you have the privilege to see them work out, you should be paying them. I agree. I want to become an IFBB pro. I need to work on this. this Free gym thing? membership worldwide. Hey, Lucas, do you have to wear... You don't have masks in your gym, do you? You're in Poland. No, no in Poland, I doubt. During no, I was talking about, no. no, about Lucas. No, during workout, you don't have to wear a mask. Really? Only when, yeah. you, are, only when you are entering to the grocery, supermarkets, malls, then you need to have uh, a mask. But when it comes to, like, working out, not at all. Physical yeah, same here. Do you have limited capacity in a gym? I mean, my nope. gym was pretty lonely anyway, so. No, nope, not at all. Yeah, I no, think my friend, uh, he runs a mainstream gym and no they just at, yeah, there's no restrictions on capacity, but like American gyms can get pretty intense anyway. Can they? Uh, like the Las Vegas Athletic Club could. Well, or like, like, your gyms compared to like gyms outside of America, yeah, they I get pretty damn that. intense. Let's go on it, everybody. We're going to take this on the road. We're going to go see different gyms across the world and compare live. <laughs> Feel actually, because I was traveling a lot, one of the best uh, one of the best perks is actually seeing different gyms all over the world. I mean, Shane, you're, you're doing the same when you're traveling, I'm assuming. There's, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I love that part of actually like going into different uh, gyms in the US because there's different and also globally. My favorite one was actually in Iceland. Actually, I think I still like so. This there's this ice first. Everyone looks like fucking Thor in that gym. You oh, look yeah. like a midget. Like you go into this gym and everybody's so freaking big and they're like lifting the longest way. Yeah, just huge. And this gym actually, and you know, Iceland is like three hundred thousand people, right? The whole freaking yeah. island. No, like, I didn't know. No, it's so like the island. There's like three hundred thousand people. The whole island. That's it. That's what they have. And uh, actually, one of the biggest issues in Iceland, Google. It's actually really interesting. By the way, it's a beautiful place. What? There's uh, the biggest issue is to find someone to marry without having some sort of family. Relation? <laughs> yeah, because it's three hundred thousand. They need us there. So <laughs> exactly. Go breed. Go marry an so, Icelandic. <laughs> but anyway, when I was going into that gym, they had like this ret like and I'm talking like four or five years ago. Like you were going in, they had retina uh, identification, no no gym card, no nothing. You were just going in with I have still uh, videos of that thing, and the gym was so fancy. Have you been to Iceland, uh, Shane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's beautiful. I, it's an I think it's one of the most, uh, I guess, unique looking uh, environments that I've oh, ever seen. Wait, stop. What's unique about it? Explore. It, I've never seen any uh, kind of surrounding yep. that you'll see in Iceland. When you're just driving down the road and it's like yeah. middle of bumfuck nowhere and you just look around and you see absolutely nothing, you'll see like a frozen over lake and then you'll see hollowed out canyons. And lagoons and glaciers and, and the colors and like the fact that you're on the highway and there's no lights. <laughs> it's like it's crazy, yeah. Nothing. So think about this, Sandy. It's, it's this like is an it. island, okay. a volcanic island. It was created from a volcano. And there's still active volcanoes there. It's a, oh, it's, a okay. it's a volcanic volcanic island in the middle of nowhere, going directly over the Atlantic Ridge, goes through it. So the environment and it's still very active. Yeah. So the environment is just crazy. Like when we, we went to Iceland, and I agree with Shane, like this is the most beautiful place I've ever been in, the most unique place. And you see glaciers and lagoons, and it's just amazing. And then after we came back from Iceland, we went to Yellowstone, which is supposed to be like, oh my God, right. ooh, fucking boring. Like my wife and I were trying to find something that ranks top 20 in Iceland, in Yellowstone. And we yeah. couldn't, nothing comes even close. Like said, okay, never do that again. Wow. Like if you do Iceland, just let it be for like a year, sit down. Yeah. Because nothing is going to compare. It's really, really amazing. It's, it's just so remote. Environment. Can I ask a stupid question? What is the food like in this glacial? Is it nasty? I it's a very like developed country. It's so an really extremely developed country. The food is good. It's uh, food. I don't know. It didn't feel Of different. all the places that I ate, <laughs> of all the countries I went to, they, they don't really have, like, when I went to the Middle East, a lot of their, like, restaurants and fast food were very, like, Middle Eastern food, different right. types of meats and different... Okay. In Iceland, I did not see that. In Iceland, I didn't see much of that. I, I ate at Subway. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to go home, you know, get that, get that No, but that's, back. like, at the food court, that was literally what they had there, was just mostly mainstream... Uh, yeah, like stuff. yeah, it's mainstream stuff. Super developed, super modern. They didn't have, like, a... An Icelandic. That's what I'm saying. Though. What's their fast food place? There's 300,000 people. There's not enough people to develop a food culture. <laughs> they have skill. That's it. That they have their. Although, I was They're disappointed because thick. every country I've been to, every country I've been to, I eat McDonald's at least once. Every country, um, Iceland doesn't have McDonald's. They could. They don't. Uh, that good. <laughs> no, 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 no. They used to be there, but the uh, economy couldn't support McDonald's like. Yeah. The way they were operated, so they had to pull out like years ago. They used they were there for a while, but so they stopped it. Honestly, so like, it's the uh, only place I had, couldn't get McDonald's. So disappointing. Do you have a standing order at McDonald's, Shane? Like, yeah, so I do. Or do you change it up? I've had this discussion with Lucas a thousand times, and everyone laughs. And I'm like, look, look. If, when you go to Please a country stop. Stop and things are McDonald's. and things are so foreign, like, and and you don't recognize anything anywhere. Okay. You go to McDonald's, it is the same. Like you know, if you go to one McDonald's in, in Japan and you go to America and you ask for a Big Mac you combo, know they have varieties, right? Chen? I mean, you've seen it. They have like local, local shit. They no, do, they right? do. But yeah. of all the places I've been, McDonald's is like the one that actually always has the menu primarily in English. They won't. Right, always, right, they won't right, right, right. Most restaurants will switch it up. They'll do it in Korean, right. Japanese, and right. but like McDonald's is always most English. But they'll have varieties, Robert. You know, like. Uh, 20 years ago, they launched Mech Shawarma in, in Israel. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, I, I like chicken shawarma. That's one of my favorite things. Whenever we go to a, a Lebanese restaurant or some kind of Middle Eastern place, I love chicken shawarma. Yeah. It's the consistency, man. You can just get a Big Mac and you know you're going right, to you know, you know get a Big Mac. You're going to get a Big Mac. It's going to be disgusting. You're going to move on. There are some variances, but like you, it's, it's like, you know what you get in. It's always that. And then you can go there. Donald Shane. Huh? What is your order at McDonald's? Do you go chicken yeah. nuggets, eat burgers? Do you do the, the, the veggie wrap? What do you do? I don't go there to eat healthy. Um, let's just put it that way. So when I go, it's usually the first day yeah, I get there. Faster. So when I get there, I'll usually do a, a Big Mac. Double if they have it. Most Mega Mac, some places don't. Uh, 20 chicken nuggets. Um, and I may add like an extra uh, chicken Burger meal combo on top of that. Really? And what do you have for main course? I gain 10 pounds just by you talking about this shit. I, I don't. I don't. I don't do it often. It gets bad. 
I was, I was at, I, I never liked McDonald's burgers. I ate at McDonald's fairly often growing up, and my order thing was always a ten piece chicken nugget with a fry and a coke, or maybe a McFlurry when those finally came around. What the flaming shit? That's like, that's like a like a what is that, an not, entree? A, what do they call it? Like a fucking starter? It's not, it's not even a starter. Ava, my ba my baby eats that. <laughs> Man. I would split a twenty-piece nugget and a like a super-sized fry. No, twenty-piece I can do myself. If there's a forty on sale, I'll do that, and I can push myself to finish. No Let's problem. Go back to supplements for a second. So you remember we talked about this? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. What okay. do you think of that? What's that? What do you think of it? So I just tried it once, uh, and it's uh, it was good yeah. for the first time. But listen, so Robert, you're you're. Why do people still use Hydromax? I don't know. They're supposed to be coming out with some new, more stable version of it. Is that Hydro like, Prime? Yeah, the Hydro Prime that you were talking about on the website the other day, Shane. And I don't mean – I was talking with a brand today that used Glycer Pump. This is Hydromax Easy Flow Blend, whatever that is. But it's it's not super clumpy, but it's like it's a fresh well, tub. And it's still like – Yeah, no, yeah, I had that problem too. And the one thing I, – I actually mentioned this to the brand. I noticed that like the first scoop I had – um, because it was so dense, like uh, the scoop, the level scoop was heavier than than it than it should have been. So I had to kind of shake it up, mix yeah. it around a bit. But I actually really like that pre-workout. I no, probably it's think good. I, it's. Uh, I, I only tried it once, so I. I, don't I had it yet. twice. I'm doing it again today. Deadlifts for Father's Day, um, and uh, yeah, I, I actually quite like that one. I'm so I think it's probably Man Sports' best one um, in a while. Yeah. Okay, how much how much betaine is in uh, that game day? Is there any? I don't think there is. There's none. There is tyrosine, alpha GPC, lions. They went they went pretty heavy on the stems. Well, not heavy, but like they put more focus on it. It's four hundred milligrams of caffeine, right? Yeah, and so, uh, probably do a heap scoop. Yeah, and there's no beta alanine, and there's no betaine. Oh. Full serving is one scoop or two scoops? One scoop. One. Or a heaping scoop if you're if you're feeling yeah. uh, feeling good. Yeah. One scoop. I did don't you know why you ever, by the way, Shane, did you have the gummy bear one? Look, bro, I I mean I no, I don't give a shit about flavors. I was just wondering. Like I, I whatever I have, I don't think it tastes like that great. Yeah, it was but, tolerable. I was just gonna say it was tolerable. It wasn't it good. wasn't it wasn't like mm, Give them more of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. DJ, DJ, did you manage to get the Oxen Sledge, the gummy bear uh, edition of their pre workout? For what? As a sleep aid? No, no. You might as well take some melatonin or shit like that. Like, that stuff is nothing. Like, literally, it puts me to sleep. Both Ag of them. pre workout? Oxen Sledge. Ignition switch and uh, seventh gear. Both of them are fucking sleep aids. Really? What's what's wrong with them in your opinion? Like what's the I feel like the seventh gear is probably got a pretty good amount in there. I've never had either. What about the mount? It just doesn't do shit. Like literally, I, I had I had coffee bricks that felt better. I mean it's just it doesn't our labels are just like I mean it has a bit more stims. Like seventh, like the first one, whatever it is, ignition switch is this. <laughs> ignition switch is uh, is nothing, right? That's by definition. Even on the label, obviously. But even seventh gear is super mild. I'm just gonna wear this shit every podcast, by the way. I was just, I was just curious about your opinion because you know they they recently launched the the gummy flavor of their gummy and whiskey and what I mean. Yeah, but I feel I feel like TJ probably agrees with me, and this is a, something that because I have a couple. Of, guys that I review stuff with um, and we all notice the same when I give him a pre-workout and this is just, just, just generally how it happens. He doesn't understand labels and I don't show him it. Um, he's like, well, pre-workout are trying. I was like, should be intense. And he just takes it. Right. And, he, and, and since he doesn't, never sees brand, doesn't know name, doesn't know what's in it, he'll be like, I feel like less caffeine today. I was like, okay. And he drinks it, but mm, this tastes good. This is probably not going to work that well. <laughs> <laughs> Because he doesn't under he doesn't get marketing or he doesn't see anything else, that's his one gauge. And he always says, he's like, Oh, this tastes like shit. Right. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be good. Generally yeah. how it works. So yeah, yeah. and I and I think that when you get those good flavors, it's I mean it's not a bad thing, it's just that I would say ninety five percent, ninety ninety five percent of the time, 
if it doesn't taste like amazing, like an amino, then it's probably uh, going to be pretty damn good. I mean, I think the worse it tastes, the better it is typically. <laughs> Although I have had some products that taste dog shit and are actually shit. So yeah, it does happen also. But yeah. a lot of the time, that's a good indicator. Is uh, Accent Sledge in Europe, uh, Lucas? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And is it, yeah. How is it, uh, how's the reception to the brand? I, I have no knowledge because I'm not. Say it's not your, it's not through you guys, eh? No, we are not distributing them. They are like, they, they got some partners. You pay, isn't it? But yeah. not, not directly like in, in Europe, you know? Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're doing a good job on the branding and, and stuff like that. I like what they're doing and the whole flavor variety. Just the pre-workout, seriously, sleep aid. Like I like the pumps, the uh, the pump product. That's the one. Yeah, hydraulic or something. Yeah, like that. that yeah, that's, okay. had, that's that's a good formula. That was a pretty solid product, if I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. That one and the grind are the only two I've had. Yeah, the the pre-workouts are super mild, like super super mild. Huh. I wasn't excited. I wasn't too excited. I, I don't think that the that Accent Sledge. I'm, I think they, you know, one of those brands that portrays themselves as a hardcore brand because of Seth Ferrosi. But I don't think they are actually a hardcore brand. I think they've, I think they've no. changed a bit. I think originally it was came across as intense hardcore, Branch Warren like. But I think with the shift to those like the Unicorn Blood, and then they started uh, branding their products after the flavors like Shark Bite, um, the Gummy Bear. I think it's taken like more of a fun turn if you got what I mean like more of a uh, creative not so much um like animal pack you know you look at it it has that hardcore feel I mean it's got a silhouette of a bodybuilder on there accent sledge felt like that originally and I think they've just added a bit more made it a little more mainstream I guess and I, th I think I think it's great yeah, yeah I, I I tried a uh, I think lifestyle today rather than I, I try and take aminos, and uh, the taste is pretty good. I mean, they definitely like uh, you know nail the very good flavors and stuff. Right. But I think, uh, but I think, yeah, it's more of a fun, more mainstream, um, you know, brand more than than hardcore. It's, it's mostly lifestyle, I think. Today, speaking yeah. of people, Robert, I was the uh, Stanetsky. I was, uh, uh, I think, I left a comment on that podcast you had with the Ginger Savage. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> That that guy. Most I haven't seen it. Podcast I've heard in years. I was uh, was amazing. Kenton yeah. is one of the most yeah smartest dudes I've ever. Yeah. Him, him, and there's one other guy that just like and John Meadows. Yeah. Just when they speak to you, you're like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm a, I am dumb and I don't know anything. I'm and, dumb, and, I don't like that also, really. And I'm just like John dumb. Meadows. John Meadows is like soft spoken, but when you start talking or like get into like a topic of like that might be a little bit advanced, his knowledge just comes out straight away, and you're what, like, on supplements specifically. Oh, like when I talked to him about his intro workout back when he started with Prime. Yeah. They're like, oh, I jump on a call with John. He'll talk to you about the intro workout. That guy told me like exactly what that product does, what is absorbed, what is active, what is going on, what is then passed on from the minute it enters your mouth to like every single organ that it touches and all the way out. I'm pretty sure he went on like just right until it blows out your ass. Like he just really? touched on every part of the body, what this is for and why this is here and how this does that. And I was like, got it. I was, and he did that for like 20 minutes. I didn't say a word. I was like, "Holy shit, dude!" I mean, I just thought it was like yeah. intra workout, make me give me better endurance. That was like sweet. Let's do it. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I was impressed with uh, Ken Kendall. His name? Yeah, Kendall. Kendall. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had him on the podcast before, and J John's been on there twice. And man, those have been two of the most enjoyable things from yeah. my perspective. Those are just two like super smart guys that are very, very um, they're experts in their field, and it's it's a a real pleasure to be able to discuss right. stuff of uh, people like, on that level and in the, 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 the terminology or anything like yeah. that. Well, but he was less about uh, supplements. Well, I was impressed, obviously, the stuff that I relate to, but it was a lot about marketing and building tribes and branding. 
I actually reached out to him, by the way, I uh, because I was so fascinated with the psych, uh, philosophy element. I actually reached out to him on uh, Instagram and asked for a recommendation on uh, philosophy books and actually started reading one that he recommended. So yeah. I was really impressed with that one, with the podcast and his uh, personality. Yeah, I remember. I remember the the debate the the debate when he smashed uh, the guy that's like from real that was like you know oh, the the twin lab marketing, marketing yeah well, it was marketing yeah. EAs and you know the the entire thing with BCAs and EAs. I will that say was, that about twin lab um, and that real that they did. To be honest, that was that was the one that did the EAs, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. As much as people hate on it, it was like a weird three, four gram dose and capsules and powder. But like, if they didn't come out as hard as they did, yeah. and like just slam the crap out of BCAs and say like you know EAAs are better, I wouldn't be surprised if no one ever made the jump because it was literally them. While well, you had other people, it was kind of like transparency. You had other people doing it before Jim, but it wasn't until Jim came out and like kind of hit it in your face. People were doing EAAs, but it wasn't until like Twin Lab and Real came out, and just like that was the whole thing yeah, that yeah. it was better than BCAs. And then it after that, went too far, right? They just went too far with the graphs that showed that if you. I think you might have needed to go that far. No, no, I think you know the, the claims and everything. That was the, the main thing. Yeah, that was too far to me. I think they needed to go that far. They needed. To, I think they needed to make it. Well, well, it didn't obviously like it didn't make them like last that long because, as far as I know, I didn't think it's still available. But like, I think they needed to push it that far and exaggerate it that much to make people be like, "Okay, shit." And then, sure, shit. I don't know how many brands did it in that first I don't six know months. If people but... need that much. I mean, you see people follow ingredients after like shit research. You just need good marketing and a couple of charts. I don't no, think you had that. We had that before then. People came out with EAAs before then. There were people on the market with with EAAs. Yeah, so yeah, just but, you have some real edge purple wrap was one of the very first, even before like the yeah end thing happened. And it but still it was, is, and it still it, is one of the, was, one of the um, best selling BCAAs here in Europe. The purple wrath is like you know, intro. oh, well, it's okay. like a king. It's like a king of intro workouts. Seriously. Really? Yeah. Guys, I'm, I'm 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 serious. When it comes to like you know to intra workouts, not many people like value you know the carbs. But as far as like aminos, like purple wrath, and those kind of products are still on the on the on the top, you know. So really? yeah, see, that was yeah. that was that's been around for for goddamn years. But yeah. it wasn't until like Twin Lab did their thing that you saw the big guys jump into EAAs. Right. I feel like it was. I mean, they they were definitely maybe they didn't need to go as intensely as they did, but you know, it, it yeah, forced but, everyone. But but Shane, it's like you said, you know, I mean, they came out aggressively, even though it existed oh, yeah. before. I think they came aggressively, just like Jim Stepani. Like you know, right now, uh, Mark Glazier and everybody's trying to take. Uh, I mean, rightfully so, maybe in Mark's case, they trying to come up with like, oh well, you know what, we had fully transparent products before. Jim, but the fact remains is it's like Jim put it on a on a map like nobody else. Yeah, you, yeah. You, whether you like or hate the guy, it doesn't really matter. The fact is that he put it uh, he put transparent labels on the market like nobody else. And the same thing is with Twin Lip and EAs. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, did they have the best EA product? No, I mean they didn't. It wasn't like the best formula or anything like that. But they came very very aggressively. And, you know, other brands, even though, you know, they, they had a legit point uh, on maybe, you know, disagreeing or hating on Twinlip, I think it, it all comes down to the fact that it's nothing but, you know, jealousy. That's all it is, because those guys like literally took the charge and they, you know, developed a marketing campaign uh, that was geared to like presenting the facts why it's better and it's not always the case whether they write or not or there is science behind it but the fact is is you know they just came out very aggressively and uh you know like you said about uh, pre-workouts that taste like shit you know typically pre-workouts that taste like shit actually work but it's not always the case and the same goes oh, yeah. for, 
the, the same goes for transparent labels. You know, transparent labels can be, you know, just labels. They can be shit, whether it's on paper or, or when it comes to the effects, it can be shit. It all comes down to the fact, you know, how, how aggressive the marketing campaign is. You know, with Seth Ferrosi and X and Sledge, uh, they, they developed a story and, um, you know, Seth Ferrosi, who actually, you know, wasn't that successful of a bodybuilder, you know, I think he's... Uh, uh, even his career as a pro, a pro bodybuilder was very, very short. But, uh, you know, he wasn't, uh, he didn't win a lot of titles or anything like that, even though I think with his physique he could have, because he, he's really a, pretty good. Um, but as an as a influencer, you know, he, he definitely um, is extremely influential when it comes to, to marketing. So the, the thing is, is like, you know, I think that sometimes... Um, competitors don't give enough credit to those that come off aggressively and actually, you know, uh, making making a statement. But at the end of the day, I think it comes down to jealousy because, uh, you know, is uh, Jim Stepani, Jim's product, uh, you know, are they the best on the market? More than likely, no. They're definitely among the best because they're fully transparent and pretty decent formulas. Uh, mm -hmm. They also taste pretty good too. Are they the best? No. But is he the most successful? Um, arguably, yes, you know, I mean, he's definitely very aggressive with his marketing campaign and that's part of the success of the brand and that's just the way it is. And we have to give credit where credit's due. Yeah. Uh, bringing things full circle, what TJ first said about the glycerol and overhyped ingredients. I feel like Hydromax, Glycerpump, Glycerize, Hydro Prime, all of these glycerol supplements are severely overrated because what's the dose that we usually see in pre-workout somewhere between like two to four grams, right? You look at the actual research on glycerol, they're using, and so Hydro Prime and, and Glycerize, these are all 65% glycerol supplements. The other 35% is their, their stabilizer, their filler, you know, the, the anti-caking agents. You look at the studies, it's one to 1 1.2 grams per kilogram of glycerol. So that, so if you weigh 70 kilograms, you need oh, 70 shit. grams of glycerol. To get, so you think you're going to get much of a hyperhydration effect or a cell swelling from two grams of 65% glycerol? Eh, I'd rather put my money, you know, into something better like uh, other osmolites like taurine or betaine or something like that. How many? How many did you say? How many grams per kilo? One gram per kilo. Fuck that noise. Yeah, that's why they sell like go on Amazon and look at glycerol supplements. They sell like vast like jars of glycerol liquid glycerol and you could that would be easier to get your 70 grams in that's that. what um what's his name came out with nutristat if i'm not mistaken a pump script yeah it was 20 grams per seven yep yeah you need i mean that's what if you're looking at the, the clinical data that they use on like endurance athletes to create that hyperhydration state it's one to 1 1.2 grams per kilo yeah i'm gonna tell you that, well that, that's like 100 it's 100 grams for me fuck that yeah you took it three ounces of glycerol right there man there you go jesus <laughs> there we go same God damn it. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, I think that's one of those ingredients that maybe Robbie for the next version of bare knuckle or something, we remove glycerol all, all entirely just because I know it's. No, no, no. Robbie yeah. should do a special edition version and, it, and it's 20 grams of glycerol per serving and it comes in a protein tub. There you go. Well, that, that's going to, that, that's going to be a fucking brick. Yeah. It's just, it, it creates so many issues. I don't think the return on investment is there. I think it's got this special, special edition bare knuckle brick. There you go. You know, and, and like I said, we had uh, faster or harder. We, we had glycerol in a in a last uh, pretty much in every version of uh, of bare knuckle. But anything it does create, it creates a lot of headache more than anything. I'm not saying that it's a useless product, but you know, based on what Robert said, you know, when it comes to science, if you put that much glycerol in uh, in a pre workout, then you know, you just have so many ingredients. Like, I hear everybody's raving about hooligan when it comes to, even though I was giving more emphasis on the focus of the product, but everybody raves about the pump. And I think even TJ, when he reviewed it, he said, Well, you don't need to add any pump product to this because the pump is pretty good. But the reality is, all we did was added one gram of citrulline. That's all it, it was. There is no other pump ingredients in it. And I'm a huge fan of citrulline. I think it's an amazing product. And at six, seven, eight grams, you 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 get tremendous pump and you don't have to deal with all the clumping and all the shit issues that you know that other products present themselves. I mean yeah. uh, 
there, there is no need. And not only that, I mean, if you have a good meal, a good pre-workout meal, and if you have a good pump product or pump ingredients, like even basic citrus, you know, Vesso 6 or something like that, your pump is going to be insane as is, you know, that's just the fact, you know, you know, try to work out hard, lift heavy weights and there's your pump. And let's face it, you know, it's a temporary effect. That's all it is. You know, after a couple of hours, you back, go back to normal. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think I think from the pre workout you will you will benefit a lot more from uh, from focus and and the stems. I mean that's that's what you essentially need more than anything. Uh, Chris, to answer your question, um, Branch and I will, will be talking in the next couple of days about uh, you know about him coming to a pond. So he's definitely coming to a pond. But to be honest with you, with twenty five percent capacity and the way things are right now until things go back to normal uh you know in new jersey when it comes to gyms and allowance of how many people can be in the gym i don't think that's going to happen until probably early 21 hopefully has anybody tried bang stoked is that the one that's infused with cbd it is it is yes two versions two versions i gotta sit they got one with with energy and one without has anybody tried that? I have not. So sorry. I had the I had the Kill Cliff CBD drink, mm -hmm. and like they were saying, you know, it tastes amazing, blah blah blah. And ba I haven't tried any other CBD drink, so I was like, this is my first one. Let's give it a try. And I had a drink, and I was like, okay, cool. So right out of the gate, I was like, this is like plant protein, like you know, this tastes like just normal way. And then you take it, and like this is not normal way. This is very obviously like. It feels dirty. It's like some some graininess to this. Oh, okay. And so the CBD drink, I was like, okay, cool. Taste the carbonation, and then you get that earthy Congrats. taste. And I'm like, okay, cool. So this is just what CBD drinks taste like. So I imagine, and I haven't tried stoked, but I imagine there's probably going to be that hint of like this has yeah. definitely got a little herbal side to it, kind of thing. So I mean, if you can look past that, maybe it tastes good. But I haven't tried it. I'm just going off the Killcliff one, which, like I said, I was CBD. Is there like a good amount of CBD there to actually have an effect, or this is just uh, uh I think it's probably it's I think the most I've seen like some have 10, some have 25, so not like a huge amount. Um, probably doesn't but, do shit. yeah, it's uh, it's, it's kind of like um, you know, when they when they sprinkle in taurine or uh, yeah. uh into yeah, energy no. drinks, yeah. I've only seen a couple. Yeah, this, I mean, the, the clinical dose for CBD isolate that's shown any effect is 300 milligrams. And if you're going to be using, like, pharmaceutical yeah. CBD isolate in your energy drink, it's going to cost a lot more than $3 a can. Uh, it's, uh, I think the most I saw was 25 I, yeah. think, that's, well, I think that's this Killcliff one. I don't think uh, Stoked Outlines how much is in its one. When it's like, uh, I couldn't find it. Probably not. Anyway, so a marketing exercise. Yeah, yeah it's probably more. That. They excel at that stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Guys, I, I, I have a question. I, I had a meeting with uh, with one of our retailers a couple of days ago, and uh, I don't know, this question is probably more for Robert, but I wanted your opinion on this. Uh, so we talked about like demand for different products on the market, you know, pre-workout, proteins and stuff like that, intra-workouts. And uh, he said to me that one of the best sellers that he has right now in his store, there is demand for greens uh you know for for products when it comes to greens and i i've seen some reviews you know that tj did you know that they great tasting some of them are good tasting some not so much uh i won't be you know making any claims that i'm an expert when it comes to the field of greens but i wanted your opinion when it comes to product uh, as a from a marketing perspective but more more so from what do you think in terms of uh benefits of those products do they have place in the market and should people spend their money on it uh no <laughs> in a word so i mean i think greens greens have the halo effect that you you know they're, they're called greens they're made from dehydrated powdered vegetables so a lot of the water soluble nutrients depending on how they're mm -hmm. processed will be gone so you can't list any kind of vitamin or mineral content every greens formula that you see on the market that has vitamins and minerals to it it's not naturally occurring within the greens and reds formulas. It's stuff that's added after the fact. So it's like putting a multivitamin complex into your greens powder. Um, I, that being said, you're also not getting a lot of the fiber and water that you would get from you know eating whole foods. I, 
insofar as it could be a benefit, I'm thinking that maybe you'll get some of like the antioxidants, polyphenols, and chlorophyll stuff, which actually supports makes you makes food. you feel good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got that halo effect that you think you're doing something good for your body, and yeah, maybe some fringe benefit, and like you're supporting some of the the phase two detox detoxification pathways in the body, but we really have next to no literature as far as green supplements. Uh, I think there might be one study that Athletic Greens funded maybe five or ten years ago. Um, but as far as all the, the companies putting out greens now, it's just they're following a trend. Is there, is there, is there research that says the other way around? Is there research that says it doesn't do shit? That's a good question. No, there's not research saying it doesn't do shit. But I mean, it, I mean, there's not. Is it, better, is it one of these things that it's for sure better than nothing? Because there's stuff that you're not even sure it's better than nothing. Is it for sure better than nothing, or you think it's not even better than nothing? Is it? Is it I think it's better than nothing. I, like I, I, I drink a lot of greens product because I think it's better than nothing. Oh, yeah. I, if, I, if, I had, if I could eat all the shit broccoli that I just hate, I would. But. I don't. So is it better than nothing? I mean, I think for a company, look at somebody like um, Glaxon, Super Greens. They put yeah. in the, the Super Shroom blend into there, and that's what I think is cool when you're adding mushrooms to it. But if you're just giving me a five-gram blend of, like, dehydrated broccoli, alfalfa, chlorella, and spirulina, you need, you need like, at least, I think, three grams of spirulina to hit, like, a clinical dose. But look at a Legion Athletics Genesis, I think, is their greens formula. Um, is a really good company. Uh, new, uh, Morphogen Nutrition's green supplements good. I like uh, Glaxon's greens. Um, I just I don't I, th I think most companies are just doing like the pixie does five grams of it and that's it. But we don't have any data saying it's worthwhile at all. So R Robert, I think you should do it. Just basically, I think you should, like seriously, it's one of those things that the amount of companies that came out with it near the end of last year, yeah. and then the amount of companies that came out with it at the start of this year. And then it's just kind of stayed that way. I'm like, you, it's not that it it's good or bad to, to do it or not do it. It's the fact that It'll because sell. everyone else has one and then they yeah. come to you and they'll be like, oh, he's got a cool pre-workout. He's got a cool protein. Oh, bam, he doesn't have a greens. Like, <clears throat> even though that's like such probably a small fraction, it, they, they may be the thing that brings them into your brand. Be like, I heard his greens is, is the shit. Oh, and he's got a boss ass pre. Yeah. But then it's that, that greens is definitely a category that just uh, hasn't I really peaked your company. Robic, now you can put to your greens like jerky because you are now affiliated with brands. Yeah. So that's going to be fucking amazing, man. Do a Wicked Cuts, Wicked Cuts flavored greens. God damn. Meat, oh, meat and greens, meat and veg. <laughs> meat and veg. Pay me, pay me for the idea, man. Pay me for that. <laughs> Lucas, Lucas just gave it to you. There you yeah. go. Well, Ro Robert, but from... Uh, from from the benefit perspective say for example somebody you know like when they say somebody's on a keto diet and they don't consume enough uh you know carbohydrates you know for fiber and stuff like that would you still recommend from uh from pure like benefits would you still recommend a greens product or no so somebody on a keto diet mm, probably not you're not getting really fiber from the <laughs> he, he basically said he's like oh, i don't think it's gonna do much benefit i don't, I don't yes. think it varies on what diet you're on yeah <laughs> no, I don't think you're going to get a yes from Robert. So, Robert, listen, if you're an old lady or just about to die and a greens powder can save your life, would you give her greens powder? No. Yeah. I don't think if so. you could save her life, science shows no. That's pretty much what you have to do. If you could show me some tangible benefit, I don't see what a green supplement is going to do for you that okay, okay, no, no. Was, okay, okay, make okay. it. <laughs> how about we how about we phrase it the, there's an old lady she's on her deathbed and her favorite flavor is super greens berry right. would you give it to her? would you give it to her or would you read her the entire <laughs> side that shows that it does shit and then tell her that it <laughs> tell her to go the fuck die and leave her alone exactly yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> i think it i think it's good i think it's it's one of those categories that people i it seems is is is, is fast growing and is um any other one? I think the only other one I've seen that seems to be getting big now is the uh, the I don't know if Robert's gonna like this one, but the uh, the sort of hormone balance estrogen thing. Yeah, you kind of seeing where they're blending beauty, beauty ingredients to get the. I think Alani New might have been one of the first ones that kind of did it well, or like made it popular. And then um, Ghost had uh, Ghost Glow, but then uh, Man Sports and Nutritox they did their. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. They had like a hormone balancing supplement 
yeah. but primarily well, marketed for women. Supplement. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, it seems to be an interesting category. Yeah, and certain certain greens formulas to go over what this RS uh, guy is saying that some of them do have probiotics in it. So customers say they have more energy. That's definitely placebo. I mean, that's definitely gonna be a placebo effect. Uh, I wish greens gave me energy. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that, that's definitely a placebo effect on it. Digestion could be if there's probiotics in there. If there's some, uh, yeah, the because a lot of them have uh, added, a lot of them have added uh, probiotics, added enzymes, added, um, you know, yeah. a lot of them have a bunch of fiber. It's uh, you know, like you said, it's greens mixed with a lot of other stuff uh, now. Yeah, and I think I, my issue is that a lot of greens and more fruit. The average, yeah, well, I mean, a lot of these greens formulas have like one or two greens, but yeah. most of it's like fruit. sweet potato. Pineapple, so blueberry, like, strawberry. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's like a pixie dusting of actual greens. And right. I think most people are the, under the belief that this can replace eating, eating a normal amount of vegetables. And that's the, these things are in no way replacing any. That, of that. is exactly how I approach it. <laughs> but see, then that makes you worse inherently. It's like a no, I know it makes you no, worse. But it, to me, it's kind of like when you go to it's it's like when you go to McDonald's and you order like a diet coke with your Big Mac, right? Yeah. It's like you know, I feel better. Like, I mean, I'm just going to eat a thousand calories, but you know, at least I get no sugar, right? right. I know these aren't going to replace like a full load of greens, but it makes me feel like I did. So, <laughs> so it, I, I, I still have them, I think, and they taste good. So, I mean, yeah, I, again, I, I know it's not going to replace a salad or like a handful of vegetables, but shit, I'm going to do it anyway. And I can't be bothered making my broccoli. <laughs> I also think it's up to the formula and what will be included yeah in you know for example if you can if you're gonna put like only wheatgrass and like spirulina and just sprinkle some shit uh, on top of that and just like think that people's gonna buy this shit then it's not worth it but at the same time if you're gonna like invest in some quality ingredients and make the the formula uh, a bit different than others just like i said for example make a spin-off with with branch do some type of a shit with like jerky add some add some other, other stuff yeah that that, that 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 can be something something unique something different and yeah, plus it's, it's gonna it's also gonna you know uh be be some type of uh, like uh attractive for for your your customer base because you know you're a apollo nutrition so you offer something different and you know people like people like the brand like the branding even Sandy likes the branding, so so yeah, man. I think what so we're gonna like, call it's a it's a like walking board. advertisement. So so yeah, man. Yeah, Robbie, but we're gonna make Apollon's hardcore greens. We're just gonna sell people a tub full of spinach and say, "Here's your greens, motherfucker. Eat them. <laughs> Be hard. <Yeah. laughs> Add six ounces of water and just chug it whole." Exactly. I just want to say thanks. To I just want to thank, thank for the comment to Ryder. He's my good friend from Estonia. So best regards to Estonia. There we go. Oh, shit. What time yeah. is it? Uh, it is late there. Is it's it late there? Oh, dude. It's, it's oh. almost 10 p.m. Oh, I'm asleep. Is it, is it Estonia like an hour after you, or is that a little bit further east? Yeah, further east. Oh, it's east damn. Oh, well. TJ, but uh, basically, uh, ever since you switched, how long you been uh, on uh, you know vegetarian diet for two months now? Two months. How do you feel? Like do yeah, you have he is the, he is the hour. The only difference is I don't eat almost meat. eleven in Estonia. Yeah, yeah see, he's, he's an hour later. I thought it was a little east. Yeah. yeah. Do you the feel only, any different? I don't feel any different to be honest. Like I just don't eat meat. It's not a big difference. Vegan is a big difference. Like. Vegetarian is nothing. I just don't eat meat. Oh, you're vegetarian, uh, not vegan. No, my son, Gilad, curly hair, went uh, vegan. Fuck. Uh, and uh, I just, while he was doing that, because he came and said, hey, listen, I'm going to stop eating meat. How about you do that with me? I said, sure. Easy. So, <laughs> my daughter told me to do that. But ha sure. have, you, have you noticed like how you recover? Have you noticed your workouts change? You know your physique changed, the mood, uh, anything. I feel old as fuck, and, and yeah, <laughs> his mood improved. Look at him. Oh, yeah, I'm getting older by this. Yeah, still old. How <laughs> long? How long has it been? No, two months. That's two not. Months. Okay. Yeah. That's shit. And, uh, a couple of months. 
Yeah, it's easy. I, I also don't, I'm not a meat person anyway. So like, it really doesn't bother me. And also I'm generally speaking, not a food person, like in, in the sense of, I like, like I'm, I'm okay. With, I think we talked about it. I, I can eat sandwiches all day. I just don't give a shit. Like just, just mm -hmm. fill my butt belly with something. Mm -mm. You're a connoisseur, just like Shane, McDonald's. All day. Yeah, yeah, and I talked about it. Like, mm. I, just let me eat something. <laughs> I, I don't hey, care. man, Big Mac could also class as a sandwich. Uh, depends how you look at it. <laughs> Here's a, is a hot dog a sandwich? What? Is a hot dog a sandwich? It is a sandwich. Where did I hear this? Why? How, how Did this topic come up somewhere that I... I heard this somewhere. And someone I heard it somewhere, somewhere about it. And someone on, on the whatever video I was watching, they brought up the fact and they looked up the definition of a sandwich and a hot dog, and it had to be I can't remember what video I was watching. Oh, it was in Jackson's and Sludge podcast. They did also the debate about uh No, I haven't listened to that one. Oh, I, I thought I, saw, I think I saw it on a TV show. When What's they looked it, it up. A hot dog is a sandwich? Yeah, so yeah. What no. no, hot dog is a hot dog, it doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But it's, it's not a sandwich. Feast in dough. In two see, but see, here's 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 the other here's the other trick with you guys is that in America, and this is something you, you may can. not notice, is that on the menu you guys have sandwiches, right? Mm -hmm. In a lot of places outside of the outside of America, a sandwich cannot be a bur cannot have a burger bun. It's two pieces of bread. It's never yes. a burger bun. Never. Rich, right? But in America, a sandwich can mm -hmm. have burger buns, and it. I was like, I remember when the first time I went there and it's like sandwiches. I'm like, why the fuck would I want chicken patty between bread? What the hell is this? And then I start looking through it and I'm going, but that guy's got a bun and that guy's got a bun. And I'm looking like, I was like, fuck. I said to my wife, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to order this chicken sandwich. If it comes on bread, it comes on bread. And it showed up and I was like, I think that they have named the buns wrong. I think that they confused it. And then you learn slowly. Okay, and outside of America, sandwich is basically what you know, whatever. Could be could be peanut butter, could be jelly, could be, <laughs> be Yeah, but see you guys have peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, yeah it's a sandwich because it's on bread, but would you put peanut butter and jelly between buns? If we didn't have bread, yeah. But then would that not be called something else? No. <laughs> so you still, yeah, see that's what I'm saying. It's, it's anyway. So outside I, sandwich, anything between two pieces of bread, burger, anything between buns. Hot dog, buns connected, doesn't count. Wow. Okay, so TJ, if I get a gyro, is gyro or shawarma, is that a sandwich or is that not? It's a sandwich. Everything is a sandwich. Okay, that's what they call it here is a sandwich. That's what I order. In fact, I want to eat it. Can we go get one? No. I want a gyro sandwich right now. Shane, does a gyro count as a sandwich or is that something? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember what the hell that is. It, it's gyro it's and bingo, and bingo, right? That's on a wrap. Yeah. You do a gyro wrap. Which oh, gosh. Like, a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Yeah. That's a wrap. But is wrap a sandwich? No. It's no. not separated. I already told you. No. Bread. Okay. Bread, yes. Oh, bread. Just did. Yeah, pieces of bread. It's not breaded. I'm pretty sure the people who came up with gyro would be extremely disappointed if you call their shit bread. <laughs> Peter, You'd be like, bro. What you just came up with? What you came up with? We we done that. We done that ages ago. Just two slices of bread, bro. Nah. Together. This wow. is no, that's just a wrap. <laughs> because then that's then you got the whole. Then you can rope in. You can call a roti or a pita uh, bread. That's a that's a sandwich. No, it's not. That's a wrap because it wraps around. They do that. What about a corn dog? See, you know, you you want to hear something's going to blow your mind? Yeah. Corn dogs are the sausage hot dog on a stick, right? Yeah. So outside, well, I don't know if it's the same in Europe for, for Lucas, but in Australia and New Zealand, that's a hot dog. If you want a if you want a sausage on a piece of on a bun, you actually have to ask for an American hot dog. We don't got that shit here, so no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Lucas has got the kielbasa over there. He's saying I'm not fucking yes. with that American shit. But we have uh, what do you mean a hot dog on a stick? That's just a fucking, it's just a corn dog. That's just a sausage. Shane, okay, uh, Shane, what what if you have a burger patty between two slices of bread? It's a sandwich. It's a patty melt. Yeah, it's a patty melt. Yeah. I don't. I don't gauge or judge what you put on your sandwiches. You could put. You could put hooligan if you want. It's still a sandwich. Okay. <laughs> so anything with, two, a, a, anything with two pieces of bread is a sandwich. That's what you said. Yeah. Saying. If there's nothing in between it, it's just bread. The minute you put something in between it, you sandwich it together. Sandwich. 
<laughs> Sam, Done. This is enlightening. See, aren't you this like is, part in this? This has not been about supplements. <laughs> <laughs> One bit. We covered glycerol, uh, green supplements. We covered some some important. Uh, now we're defining sandwiches and burgers. Exactly. Important. And reps. Reps. Yeah. I it's like your definition, though, Shane, because it's pretty clear cut. It is clear cut. It's clear cut. Sandwich, sandwich, the word sandwich means to put two things together. I don't have to think about anything. Sandwich. Sandwich, sandwich bread. Sandwich. A pot boy is between two pieces of French bread, so according to him, it would be more like buns, so I would say it's more like a burger. Okay. Yeah, see, that's where you get a bit funky there, because in, in, like, in Europe, where they start putting yeah. traditional sandwich things. I guess. And they put like those weird buns and they, yeah. In the UK, they do it and they have different styles of buns. I would still call that, that's a tricky Not one. Buns, bread. It's fun. Yeah. That's a big difference, oh, man. A burger. Like a bon me of Vietnamese po' boy. That's a burger. Look, man, we're just talking about burger buns and sandwich bread. That's all there <laughs> is to it. Okay. You want to get fancy and mix things up? There's, there's, there's your, um, I stick with what I do. I stick to the McDonald's menu. <laughs> you want to see French bread at McDonald's? Hey, run down for Sandy again. Your uh, standing order What's at order? McDonald's. She missed that earlier. Uh, uh, Mega Mac combo. Sometimes I don't do double, but if they do, uh, twenty nuggets. If they have a bigger one, I'll do it. And then the uh, a large chicken burger meal. Typically, it's like sometimes it might be like a uh, they'll have like a grand fancy version with chicken and bacon. But yeah, it's a French. Uh, I depends because some places fried chicken sucks. Um, so I'll gauge on the country. That's a lot of food. Like Is that hours. your meal for the day, or oh, that'll be that'll be usually when I get off the plane and I'm hungry. That that I would still eat other stuff outside of that during the day, like a breakfast and lunch. That would be yeah. That's a lot. Of this pre deadlift meal. I thought I ate that's a lot of churches, but that's a lot of food. No, so you, my, the fact that you, what you need to do is you need to go to uh, what's it? It's a heart attack in Las Vegas. Yeah, any, the heart attack room. What's yeah. that? Have we've you been to it? Eating challenges. Oh, I've been there like three times, four times. Enjoy my greasy food. I don't want to shove it down my throat. There's a difference. I savor my cheese fries. It's the it's the place where if you don't finish your burger that you order, you get spanked by the nurses. That sounds so exhilarating. We're going. I haven't been. I haven't been yeah, spanked yet. I finish every time. But ooh, that's the point. That's the caveat. And you got to pay. Because they have you basically it's the one burger and you ought tell them how many patties you want. And I think it's like maybe a quarter pound, half a pound a, a, a patty. I think it's I think it's half a pound. Yeah. Each patty. So the most I did was six. I did the six piece. And I was I I finished that to the best of my ability. So did I you, was I didn't get spanked, no, I finished it. You finished it. How long did it take you to finish? See, this is the problem. This is kind of like when I work out. I try and do as many reps as I can because if I because you know the longer it goes on, I'll get tired, right? Yeah. So I finished this burger. Maybe I had to finish it in 10, 15 minutes. Otherwise, I'm just gonna throw up. So I had to pull it down pretty quickly. That's crazy. I think I got to like the 15 minute mark and had like one patty left. But if I do it slowly, I'm just gonna fill up. I know you do it too slowly, man. Your body knows it's bad and you stop. But I, 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 my performance on that was just pristine. There was no like peak or slowed. It was, I just finished it full speed right at the end. So I was happy. Yeah. You did. But you need to go. <clears throat> you definitely should go to it. I tried to get uh, Etienne to it, Lucas, but he would not, he would not come. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a good place. Yeah. Good deal. All right, gentlemen, we're coming up on the two-hour mark. Any uh, closing remarks before we put a bow on this podcast? Two hours. What the hell? Hey, man, it's the evening and afternoon for you guys. I'm yeah, about to go do some. Water, water, to explode. I'm about to go do some deadlifts. There we go. Oh, right. oh, I call. There we go. There's Father's Day here, so I'm. Doing... Oh, okay. Happy Father's Day, man. It's, Father's it's Day, different. Man. It's different in like different parts of the world, I believe. You yeah, guys had it. Yeah. Usually I'm in America, so usually I'm in America, so it's a different time. But uh, yeah, in Poland it's also a different day. So yeah, really a different. Yeah. Day. Oh man, oh, I thought there was just two. Oh well. <clears throat> well, I'll be I'll be ripping the uh, 
listen listen to listen so uh, i'll make sure i lift heavy there you go i lift heavy all right guys thank you yeah. for doing this and we will uh reconvene next weekend same time same place yep hell yeah hey bye take care guys <laughs>